The 20th Century World Hostility Scoreboard. The following is a list of hostilities that took place in the 20th century among the civilized peoples of the world. The uncivilized were unable to provide reliable statistics. Two world wars, 250 civil wars, 311 holy wars, one cold war, 516 wars of liberation, 331 wars of containment, 691 wars of honor, 296 declared wars, 856 undeclared wars, four brush fire wars, two vest pocket wars, 413 limited wars, 1987 acts of war, 7,756 warlike acts, 88 police actions, two nuclear attacks, 6,578 government massacres, four holocaust, 943 jihads, 693 pogroms, 614 long-term persecutions, 12,111 acts of treachery, 575 betrayals of the masses, 958 grabs for power, 400 putsches, 50 total enslavements, 837 partial enslavements, 4 total genocides, 461 partial genocides, 13,658 ceasefire violations, 3,115 boundary disputes, 1,432 border clashes, 3,047 social conflicts, 798 sectarian rivalries, 13,678 civil disturbances, 946 carpet bombings, 4,288 threats to security, 286 popular uprisings, 1,877 areas of unrest, 622 strife-torn regions, 165 internal upheavals, 745 political repressions, 12,194 acts of sabotage, 1,126 violent outbursts, 9,876 mass detentions, 11,904 guerrilla operations, 3,466 suicide missions, 823 slaughters, 1,200 bloodbaths, 43,096 atrocities, 106 reigns of terror, 715 rebellions, 28 revolutions, 21 counter-revolutions, 746 coups, 745 counter-coups, 457 insurgencies, 458 counter-insurgencies, 4,622 covert operations, 3,422 direct interventions, 617 enemy incursions, 13 measured responses, 295 commando strikes, 694 retaliatory raids, 844 surprise attacks, 236 protective reactions, 2,155 frontal assaults, 213 responses in kind. 17,876 hostile incidents, 4,756 belligerent moves, 938 naked aggressions, 849 foreign adventures, 601 overseas entanglements, 307 arms races, 98 international powder kegs, 515 regional tinderboxes, 818 military flashpoints, 2,415 heated exchanges, 911 shows of force, 668 heightenings of tension, 735 deliberate provocations, 921 military confrontations, 639 dangerous escalations, 3,721 terrorist bombings, 438 preemptive strikes, 630 outside aggressions, 8,571 violent disturbances, 646 surgical strikes, 4,392 diplomatic deadlocks, 82,879 ultimatums, 788,969,747 heated arguments, 823,275,571 shoving matches, 917,704,296 fistfights, 942,759,050 snotty phone calls. That's how we did, folks. All in all, not a bad record, considering the number of fools in our ranks. I remember when they tried to teach me to tell time as a little boy. What they didn't know, of course, was that you don't tell time. Time tells you. Still, they tried. Now, George, the big hand is on. I don't have a big hand. Both my hands are little. Never mind. Just look at the clock. And I did. And it was wonderful. I love the face of a clock. To me, there is great emotion attached to the face of a clock a conventional analog clock. Digital clocks are all right in their place, I suppose, but they lack the friendly spatial relationships that exist between the hands and the numerals on an analog clock. There's a psychological component. 
To me, the first half of any hour, as the minute hand falls from 12 to 6, passes a lot more quickly than the second half, when it has to struggle upward, fighting gravity all the way. I'll say this much, if I only had half an hour to live, I'd want it to be the second half. I just know it would last a little longer. Life is full of little moments that we never seem to mention to each other. Do you ever look at your watch and immediately forget the time, so you have to look again? And still it doesn't register, so you have to look a third time? And then someone asks you what time it is and you actually have to look at your watch for the fourth time in three minutes? Don't you feel stupid? Do you ever find yourself standing in a room and you can't remember why you went in there? And you think to yourself, Maybe if I go back where I was, I'll see something that reminds me of it. Or maybe it would be quicker if I just stand here and hope it comes back to me. Usually as you're weighing those two options, two words float across your mind. Alzheimer's disease. Do you ever have to sneeze while taking a piss? It's frightening, isn't it? Deep down you're afraid you'll release all sorts of bodily fluids into your pants. What people don't realize is that it's physically impossible to sneeze while pissing. Your brain won't allow it. Because your brain knows you might blow your asshole out and wind up having to repaint the entire apartment. Have you ever noticed how sometimes all day Wednesday you keep thinking it's Thursday? Then the next day when you're back to normal, you wonder why you don't think it's Friday. Have you ever been sitting on a railroad train in the station? and another train is parked right next to you, and one of them begins moving, but you can't tell which one, and then it becomes obvious, and all the magic is gone. Wouldn't it be nice if we could spend our whole lives not knowing which train is moving? Actually, we do. Did you ever fall asleep in the late afternoon and wake up after dark, and you can't figure out which day it is? You actually find yourself thinking, could this be yesterday? You ever try to tell someone they have a little bit of dirt on their face? They never rub the right spot, do they? They always assume the mirror image and they rub the wrong side. Don't you just want to slap the bastard? Have you noticed that when your head is on the pillow, if you close one eye, the pillow is in one position, but when you switch eyes, the pillow seems to move? Sometimes I lie awake for hours doing that. You ever reach the top of a staircase and you think there's one more step? So you take one of those big awkward steps that doesn't accomplish anything, and then you have to do it a few more times so people will think it's something you do all the time? I do this all the time, folks. It's the third stage of syphilis. When they show a dog on TV, do you try to get your dog to look at him? Don't you want your dog to see the dog on TV? I do. Look at the doggy! Look! Look at the dog! Over there! On TV! Look! They don't look. They won't look. Even if you try to twist their head around and point it toward the TV, he ain't gonna look. Over there! Turn your head! Look! On TV! Look at the dog! God damn it, you asshole! Look at the fucking dog! They never look where you want. If you point at something, they just stare at your hand. You try to show them something interesting, they think you're showing them your hand. There he goes again. Showing me his hand. Why does he do that? I guess he's really proud of it. Uh-oh, now he's twisting my head around. Oh, Jesus, what did I do now? Well, for one thing, you completely missed the dog on TV. I don't have nice days anymore. I don't bother with that. I'm beyond the nice day. I feel I've outgrown the whole idea. Besides, I've already had my share of nice days. Why should I be hogging them all? Let someone else have a few. Naturally, everyone still wants me to have one. Every person I meet wants me to have a nice day. Especially clerks. Have a nice day! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to give me my fucking change, please? I'm triple parked. Some of them are really insistent. I said have a nice day! Do it! All right, all right, all right. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. That's the trouble with have a nice day. It puts all the pressure on you. Now you have to go out and somehow arrange to have a positive experience, all because of some loose-lipped clerk. Have a nice day indeed. Maybe I don't feel like having a nice day. 
Maybe, just maybe, I've had 27 nice days in a row and I'm ready for a crappy day. You never hear that, do you? Have a crappy day. Why, thank you. Right back at you. And to your wonderful family as well. Crappy day. That would be easy, wouldn't it? No trouble at all. No planning involved. Just get out of bed and start moving around.